Isha Bisram, and you're listening to the Every Shade Podcast. Elliot Stevens co-created Psychostadia, a short thriller reflecting the political climate of the United States. The film follows Mark and Lori, a couple on the run from radical homegrown extremists. Mark, played by Elliot Stevens, and Lori, played by Ashley Christine Vega, have been on the run for months. Right and left-wing extremists scour the country for individuals like them to indoctrinate with their beliefs. After meeting a young boy in hiding, Mark and Lori have flashbacks to important moments throughout their relationship that coincidentally forecast the division and downfall of the U.S. government. Elliot Stevens is the newest version of a triple threat, an actor, writer, and director who isn't afraid to push boundaries through new art. First of all, thank you so much for uh, doing this podcast with me. Um, of course. I guess first and foremost, the first thing I'm going to ask you is, where did the seeds start? Why okay. Psychostania and like, where did it come from? Where did the idea come from? Um, so the idea came from, I uh, am a big fan, always have been as a kid, um, of like thrillers and like horror movie type things, like something suspenseful, like get your blood going kind of thing. And I also at times feel like like things have been done to death like over and over and over again um so i i i thought of the idea because you know i know i know people who are very um passionate about like politics and like extremist level on one side or the other um so i i had this idea of like what would a zombie film look like of like political zombies? Yeah, like zombies, like like brainwashed, like or whatever, based on your political point of view. So that's what like birthed the idea. And then a lot of research, like, and that's how I led to Psychasthenia is the name and like because of what it means. And the show Black Mirror does such a good job of like taking what is reality and like what happens if you go like one step too far like this crazy thing could happen and it could just be totally strange and bizarre and it's like in twilight zone new age twilight zone is great um so yeah so that so then yeah i took that idea of what if one of the parties like took it one step too far and and took advantage of technology in a way to manipulate people so that's what kind of like birthed the idea of it was just like what like a zombie film about politics and how it can kind of take over your your whole being and mind it's kind of crazy because it's a little scary yeah when you when you when you touch on reality a little bit <laughs> yeah yeah i mean because i feel like what you showcase in the film is it's very relative in so many ways and there is that thought process of like oh my god that this this could sort of happen in some some weird way you created this after 2016 correct Yes, I created it after 2016. Um, so I I had the idea, I pitched it to a friend of mine, um, Matt Encarnacio, who co-wrote it with me. And so we worked on it together. Um, but yeah, it was 2017, mm -hmm. the end of 2017, I think was when we, was it 2000? No, it was, hold on one second. When did I? Okay, so it was 2018 um, that we, started working on it yeah 2018. were you influenced by yeah, so, the, the election in 2016. that's totally yeah that that's totally is from, what yeah. what like i guess that was that was like the first seed is seeing people close to me be so passionate in either direction mm -hmm. that like it made me feel uncomfortable on either side like it when it so that what's that's what sparked it because i'm like wow you know i i'm a liberal person and i like i have my beliefs but there were some like i was like i could still get uncomfortable with like someone going like pushing it too far so yeah that that's where it came and i was like what is like this division where is it like what and it all comes back to like the election and our president and like what he's doing to this country mm -hmm. so like that's what yeah so that's so then i was like how do i turn this like into a creative artistic way of showing like this is like basically happening to us it was it was a little difficult to like do it in a way that's not shoving it down your throat but also hopefully like made people think and but yeah that's it was totally the election and like what happened to 
to people afterwards. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, I I think what I loved about Psychostania is that balance that you had between both sides because I felt like after 2016, there were a lot of uh, contents coming out on mm-hmm. both sides and it was kind of shoving shoving down your throat sort of like information and it gets a little overwhelming. Whereas like, you know, this film, it, d- it didn't feel that way at all. But I, as much as I do want to get into that storyline and like the balance between the two sides, um, I want to talk a bit more about like, what the process of production was because you were you're an actor writer mm-hmm. you do a lot of many a lot of things <laughs> yeah <laughs> um is, is this your first was this your first film that you produced or mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. this was uh my first film uh that i ever attempted to write yeah. um and you know i it was a, a learning it was a very great learning experience um, from writing to getting it produced, like it takes a village. I cannot and will not take like all the credit. It takes, it takes a lot of energy, time, uh, help. Um, but you know, I, I wrote it with Matt, uh, we wrote it together. And then my, I think it was like the 12th draft. We finally were like, okay, we had some people read it. And then, then that was the, like, it doesn't seem too like one way or the other. And like, we felt it was in a good place. So that I actually pitched the idea to a production company that I shot a pilot with and they liked the idea. So they, they signed on and I, well, like Matt and I brought on, um, Ashley Christine Vega as a producer mm-hmm. too, cause she's very, very talented. And I actually wrote the character of Lori with her in mind cause we were good friends. We saw each other all the time. I know her work. She knows my, my work and. So we met with them, they loved it, they signed on. So we, we built a schedule, we scouted locations, we kind of put this put it all together. And um, they kept uh, like canceling last minute on us. Mm. And it kind of, it kind of threw, it like threw a wrench in with actors, it threw a wrench in, obviously like when you cancel, it's like chaos. Yeah. It happened twice and finally I was like, you wanna know what? That was when I was like, I, I remember like I spoke to Ashley, I was like, I'm just going to do it. Like, I'm going to figure it out, you know? So Matt went to school at, I'm drawing a blank where he went to school, but um, he, he's, he knows all about equipment. Like I didn't know any of this stuff. So I emailed him. I was like, if, if you had a wish list of what all the equipment you could have on this shoot, what would it be? And he like sent it to me. So I went and got all that stuff. And Ashley and I, like, we were the ones on the ground here. We just, put it into motion and it was great because I learned so much about what goes into creating a set, being on set, having it be a safe environment, having it be an environment people want to come back to working, you know, one day and just, uh, like a collaborative space. Um, but it was a lot of late nights, a lot of, um, a lot of what works, like what doesn't. Yeah, it was, it was, we did it. I mean, it, and it was great having Ashley. Um, it was great. It was a great experience. I mean, I learned so much. I also learned that I was quite organized. I never consider myself an organized person, but like <laughs> yeah. it takes, it takes, or like it, you have to be organized. You have to be determined. You have to like, you have to be able to, like, you can't be like, oh, maybe. You can't have maybes. It's like you gotta you gotta be able to like call the shot, which is sometimes hard too. But yeah, it was a great experience. I would do it all over again. I would love to do it all over again. Like it's kind of hard right now, but um, <laughs> I would totally do it all over again. Yeah, with that production company, that was a huge blessing in disguise that they kept canceling. Because yeah. I'm a big believer in signs, and to me, that just sounds like the universe was telling you to mm-hmm. take matters in your own hands because you'll gain yeah. so much more value, which you did. And yeah, I worked with you guys for one day, and like you, yeah, everyone that was on set was just incredible to work with. And I saw your partnerships with with everyone, and it's like it is a great environment to work in. And I think it's something that you took away as well. So it's like it's very interesting that I think. diving into your own work and just taking in your own hands you just you learn so much that you just don't even know that you're going to and you wouldn't have gotten that experience anywhere else right you know right even Um, if you read about it too like on the internet or you you read about a book or something about production like it's not the same (laughs) 
it, yeah yeah no it, it's when you dive in mm-hmm. it's far different from anything that like I, I i guess that goes for a lot of things but yeah it's far different when you just dive in like that and yeah it, and it was nice to really have like our hands like dirty in it and like doing you know what i mean and matt was here with me ashley was here like we were able to really the three of us like that that doesn't work like let's and it's super creative it's like that doesn't work like we need to on the fly figure out like what's gonna work now and like Mm -hmm. what um it was it was just nice to have that versus like if we had another production company in you know what if um we weren't always aligned or something like that you know what i mean what if there was um so it was nice to just have that the freedom you know what i mean to to make it what we really wanted it to be yeah how many how many days did you guys shoot we shot over nine it was like nine days oh wow yeah nine days oh wow that's pretty that's pretty tight for it it was tight because we so we were aiming for fall so we started scheduling like october and we didn't want to get into snow so we started like uh scheduling the first weekend of october but then when they canceled on us twice it pushed us to november and i was like i can't like we didn't want we didn't want it to be snow because we had outdoor scenes and we just like safety and being cold and we had um an actor under 18 so we were very cognizant of like safety and his parents being there and all these things like we just didn't want to have to worry about it um so then it turned into like crunch three weekends back to back basically friday saturday sunday friday saturday sunday Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah because then like w- once they canceled on us twice we were like we just lost 14 days worth of of filming time so we really wanted to like get it in before snow started yeah that's good i mean it kind of pushed you guys into a corner of just pumping this baby out <laughs> pretty yeah, much exactly. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it was like we you know and luckily everyone like all, all of our actors were were like pretty um available for the other weekend you know like they were all very um helpful and yeah it just it it, it worked out i mean it's it's looking back on it i'm like wow there aren't many times in my life where like the stars align so well and that was like one of them you know that was that was one of the times for me so that was it just worked out it worked out so long speaking of the stars being aligned this film i mean it came out and it's like the political uh you know environment that we're in just keeps growing yeah um yeah which is i mean i wish that didn't happen but <laughs> you know it is yeah. it, it keeps growing and um uh i just i guess what i want to ask you is what 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 kind of feedback did you get from the film because i feel like a lot of people are so dedicated to their mm-hmm. their opinions politically and like their emotions are very uh, tied to their opinions when it comes to politics um yeah. and your your psychostania just has that balance of showing like both sides are are can be pretty bad it's not just like mm-hmm. one or the other. There's there's two sides of the story. So what what kind of feedback did you get when when the film first came out? Um, all the feedback we've gotten, um, like we haven't had any negative feedback or people saying like that's. I've never had anyone say that's unrealistic, which is cool but scary at the same time. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> you know, and all the feedback has been, um, you know, not like great and it's creative and they understand what it's saying i don't know if it's um you know having an having an effect on them but i think that like they under from what i gather like people understand and we were um at the golden state film festival and even there people this was right before covid and then everything kind of yeah all that all that momentum kind of came to an end but um yeah, like it was, um, everyone there was like, it's like, it's saying something, which is, which is nice. Um, and it is weird kind of like, because at the time we were like, what, you know, what could we say happens in the future to spark a little more? Cause we, we used stuff that actually happened like in right. through Trump's presidency and like crazy things that have happened 
And we were like, what could happen? And it's just crazy to me that like things like every time you're like, it can't get, it can't get any worse than that. Like somehow we turn, we wake up the next day and it's like, oh, it's got worse. It's gotten worse somehow, you know? And I mean, that might be the only way someone might be like, oh, you know, because we use like Trump and his presidency to show like where the division comes from. But even we couldn't speculate as to like what kind of levels it would get to that it is now, you know what I mean? And, um, and in keeping it down the middle, like not really like choosing a side, you know, I, I, I think about it now and with everything that's gone on and I, you know, I certainly feel a certain way and I would, you know what I mean? I, I'm like, part of me is like, you know, in marketing it now, like, do I just go for what I think? and feel or do I keep it like Mm. down the down the middle you know it it just it's I just really want to speak to that mentality of like it's us or them like that's scary mentality you know what I mean and I feel like that's it's just happened more and more and that's the mentality that kind of like led us down led us down the film's path is like it's us or them and that like it was brewing right like at that time and now it's like at full and like that that's like is what i want people to like i guess like take away like that them or us mentality is like scary on either side you know what i mean because it leads people to do crazy things that are happening now and a lot i mean I, I have my point of view and I would love to like push the film that way. But I also yeah. like, like the point of the film is to be like, guys, like it can't be like us or them. That's how like civil war is going to happen or something. You know what I mean? Like it can't, I don't know. It can't be like that. But... Well, what, what I like, is, what I like about the messaging now is that it's pretty neutral. <laughs> and I think that's, that allows people to absorb it a little bit differently yes 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 because i feel like if you were to push it in one direction or in one angle the way media does it all the time it's it's like people Mm -hmm. are just being driven to absorb this one message and this one side and this one view and this one emotion this one feeling where i feel as like psychostania like i i seen like your you know your social media like what you put up and it's like i don't get that feeling that i have to like believe in this belief system it's, right. there's this neutral message about what's going on and it's kind of creating i guess more imagination in your head or things that have already happened or the reality in the state that we're in yeah versus like yeah. your opinion you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah and yeah not, not your opinion i meant like the person's opinion uh, point mm-hmm, of view mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. when you first wrote this was there i mean you know you're an actor you're creative and people who are creative are we have to use our vulnerability as a tool, right? Mm-hmm. We're vulnerable all the time. So this message is very strong. Did you have any fears of releasing this or showing this story to people? Or were you just like, no, I'm pushing this through? You know, I never, no, I never once had a fear of of anyone's opinion. Um I don't remember ever having that. Like it was just, to me, it's it's like a mess. It was a message that needed to to be said. And to to you know your point, I never want like I never wanted to validate anyone's opinion. Like I never wanted them to watch it and be like, ah, oh, see, like I, I oh I told I told you, and I don't. I've never heard anybody say that about it, and I don't think anyone could watch it and leave saying that, um, you know, um, I never, I mean, so much of what we do is vulnerable, Mm -hmm. but with this, I never, people's opinions never were like worried about that. Like never, mm -mm. I was like, it needs to be said, like it needs to be said. Someone has to say it. So like, let's say it, you know? Yeah. So what's the future for psychostania? First of all, actually, before I ask that question, what does psychostania mean? So psychostania is, um, it's an old term. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of why I liked it. Um, but it basically, it um, encapsulates symptoms of fear, um, anxiety, obsessions, phobias, and it, it comes out in physical um, symptoms, right? So it's like, 
anxiety, uh, excessive fear, compulsions, and how, so how those drive people to behave. So then, so that to me was such an interesting, it's like an interesting way of pivoting what we were trying to do because so much of what drives people now isn't, isn't entirely like, it's not really education. It's not really like factual information. It's not really, it's just fear. It's like, it's so much of it or like being anxious. So like, what's going to happen next? Like I wake up every day, like what could possibly happen next? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not necessarily afraid, but it's always in the back of my mind. Like, come on, 2020, what are you going to bring today? Like, come on, president, what are you going to bring on today? Like, but, um, yeah, so that's what it means. And I thought that was the best way to describe like how easy it could be for any political party to just prey on fear mm. and anxiety because it's like those things can grow so fast in someone's mind. It's like it's so easy to go to, to like go towards that. It's so easy to fall into it. It's so I feel like it it's, says so much about a person when they can, I guess, like, find the good. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, like, it's just so easy for politics to just prey on, like, little, little fears, make them huge. You know what I mean? Make it not what it was. So that's what, that's what made me pick that term. Because I, I felt like that's what we are trying to um, portray in it. You know what I mean? How quickly how quickly things can like escalate, de-escalate, whatever the term, like fall apart. It's just, mm. yeah. That's such a perfect term for the film. It is. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, and I didn't want to, I like, yeah. Cause I didn't, I didn't want to have like, like a brainwashing thing. And like, I, I did a lot of research actually on cults mm. algorithms because it, this is like, I, I'm pretty sure the word psychasthenia was born out of, like when cults were kind of like becoming a thing mm. because so much of what they do, like, you know what I mean? Like those leaders, I guess if you call them a leader, so much of it is based on like, if you like, if you leave me and go out into the world, like you don't know what's going to happen. You got to stay in like this. I watched a lot of things. I read a lot <laughs> and like on algorithms and like what um, our phones do, like the easiest, the yeah, the easy example I always give is like, if you look up, what is vegetarianism you're like two three clicks or like an automatic youtube video popping up of like going to veganism you know what i mean like from one thing to like all the way and that's what happens with like our phones all the time if you look up like oh like let me look up like hillary clinton's speech from you know such and such date it'll just like feed you stuff till you're like in a scary like propaganda -y area and same thing with like Trump, let me look up Trump's thing. And like, it goes right to, you just start to get to this dangerous area. It's like scary that the phones know how to do that. But. It's yeah, I, I love that you used um, phones and television and these forms of electronics that kind of magnetize us and like just sucks us in. Yeah. Um, you know, this actually reminds me of, I don't know if you've heard of a, oh, what's a documentary called? It's a, it's a documentary that came out years ago about a woman who made her father... Oh, I don't know if she made her father watch it or if he watched it, but all he watched was Fox News. And his mind just started to de deteriorate and he became so negative and he just became like a different person. Mm -hmm. And all he watched was Fox News. That's all he was watching. He didn't watch any other yeah. news media. And it's, it's very interesting how our... Like, our minds just completely change just because mm -hmm. of the message that's just being kind of, you know, driven down our throats mm -hmm. by watching something, which you, you so yeah. successfully did in this in this film. You know, the moment somebody looks at, like, a phone or the TV or something, it's like they're immediately gone. Yeah. It happens so fast. And there's so much truth to that. It happens to us now, really. It happens, like, I know people just from being in... in quarantine and like not really going anywhere like i know people who felt a certain way and they're now like on the fence because like they just keep watching 
is like you know is COVID a um like a hoax? Is it like propaganda? Is it this? Is it that? So all of a sudden, like they just keep watching it. They're watching it all day. They're like, look at this, look at this. I'm like, no, oh, thank you. Um, but like they like, and now all of a sudden they don't know what to believe. Whereas, so it's like, that's like what it is. It's like it, you know what I mean. But is what they're watching factual? I like what what is it that they're watching? Like what? And to that point, it's like Fox News. I'm sure is always saying like. CNN, MSNBC, you know, Rachel Maddow, they're all lying. They're all lying. Like, come on. And vice versa. Like, everyone is like, Fox News, is, like, isn't news. So it's like, but then, then you you know, people just start to believe that. They get so in, entrenched in it. And, yeah, it's it's so, I don't, I don't, I'm sure that they do realize it. But, like, yeah, it's so easy to just, like, for news and videos and, like, all this stuff coming up and, like, it's so easy to just like encapsulate someone's mind like that. Yeah. Like that documentary you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. I got to study the documentary because I feel like you would yeah, be interested. That would be super interesting. I think yeah. it's on yeah, Amazon Prime or something. I don't know if you have Amazon Prime, <laughs> but I'll try to find it and send it to you. Um, mm-hmm. The next okay. thing I want to ask you, but it's kind of happening like in real time. So Psychostania, like obviously um, when things are escalating, things are escalating right now in our real lives. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't know how you feel, like, with your film already being done, and this is happening at the same time. It's almost like happening your film coming to life in a weird way, but... Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I've had that conversation before. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, like, nervous laughter, by the way, because <laughs> I'm just like, oh, my God, it's happening. Um, but so, do you do you have any future plans for the story? Would you Are you going to expand on it, or are you going to leave it as is? We've um, spoken about where where it could go, um, what could happen next, what, just like our characters in it, Mark and Lori, like there are, there would be so many other stories, you know, to tell. And like, also I would personally probably like to delve more into like what, what the United States was like when like it first hit and like what the breakdown was and like what, you know, cause then I'm like, what if there are some people who are so like they so don't want to be you know turned into the other side that they let it happen to them mm. just for their side you know what i mean they almost like purposely like are there people that do that purposely are like you know what i believe this i would rather become one of these people so they like let the algorithm push them to that side i'm sure that would realistically happen you know what i mean so there's i i think if i was to go back which we, we've spoken about I think I would like to touch on like a little bit of that, like what happens, like what happens, like what happens to like families, what happens to loved ones. I know we just touched on this one couple and then like what, what the world is like, what it would be like now, like who's in charge, who's in charge of like these two camps and like why and what are they doing? Like, are they trying to like get into other countries? Is it in other countries? Like what, is it all of a sudden, you know, like, I guess dystopian, but like how dystopian, like, does it almost become, you know what I mean? Like what happens to the United States when it's not the United States anymore, which is like scary because it feels like we're on that weird path a little bit. Yeah. But um, It's almost like, I feel like, yeah, it's weird when you're talking, I feel like it's happening right now as, you know, our country is imploding within itself mm-hmm. and... Mm-hmm. It is interesting to see where it would go. I'm a very positive person and hopeful and optimistic, but I'm also very aware <laughs> mm-hmm. of the reality yeah. of things. And yeah. I do believe that a lot of bad things have to happen in order to get some good out of it. And the United States in general just has a lot of, I guess, dark things in the past that's never been addressed or hasn't been um. fully addressed. And which direction is it going to go in? You know? Yeah. And it's interesting, like, what you're saying, because I just feel like you have so much opportunity to play with your story and your world. I think there's, I don't know, there's, like, some good to it and some bad to it as well. And it would be very interesting to see what happens next. Right. And the interesting thing about that is, like, we don't even know what's going to happen next. That is scary because, like like I said, you... (laughs) You can't, yeah, yeah, like, it is scary because you don't, we don't, like, it, it, what happens, like, every, like, 
it seems like every week something like new has happened. And and I agree, like there are things that need to happen to fix like what has been done like in this country. Like we like this this country is not by any means we do not have clean hands. Things need to change and you know, even when people try to do it in like a like a peaceful way, like people like other people aren't like standing for it. You know what I mean? They're like, "That's what are you doing?" And then if people are like, "We're doing like we're safely like what is the problem?" You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. just yeah, a, a lot needs to change. Um, it is scary to think about like what could happen because it could happen, and even to create it for like psychasthenia like further in the future like what what does it look like it's so like you know we claim from reality a little bit right like i would be claiming from reality a lot because so much has happened since then that i could draw upon but like i guess that's what makes it scary is like i can draw on so much reality that it's you would be like what what (laughs) (laughs) you know like it's yeah scary but I would love to continue the story, you know, like what happens to Lori? What, like, what, what are, you know, I, spe- I did, I did keep an element in of like, p- there are people who are unaffected mm-hmm. by it. Mm-hmm. Cause I wanted to, I want, like we said earlier, I wanted to keep that element of there are people who can, can be, just like un- like unaffected by that can still be you know what i mean like a positive person an open-minded person and a person who's willing to listen may not agree but you know what i mean like if you know if you feel you know so and so is like patriotic what does that mean to you and can you give me an example and then like if they can't it's like well clearly you're not thinking straight you know what i mean so it's like so i wanted to keep those middle people in you know what i mean and that's um we touch upon that in there so then, like, what happens to this third group of people who can think independently outside of, like, this algorithm? Like, what happens to them in this? So, like, I do touch on that in the film. Mm-hmm. I don't want to give too much away. But, like, stuff happens to them. Like, when you when they realize they can't be affected, like, you know, things happen. So, yeah, I did want to keep that middle ground still somewhere in there. I think one thing I want to say is that I'm so happy that this film has been made and you guys actually produced it and it's everything happened the way it happened because I just feel like to me I feel like when I'm hearing your story and hearing how you produced it and um, how you collaborate with collaborate with others I think people are always kind of hung up on oh I have to create something in order to be seen to be heard Mm -hmm. um, to have something in my resume on my IMDB page whatever your story has to be Mm-hmm. something that just resonates within you like deep within your heart for you it's like at the end of the day what was more important when it came to production every day was just building the story and driving it so yeah i think i think i'm done with my questions i don't know if i have anything more to ask you because i don't want you to give away your story of psychostadia yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i feel like the more um, i'm talking about it i'm like wait i think i'm giving some things away i don't know <laughs> <laughs> no 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 yeah. no yeah it's i don't think we gave anything away yeah. um but yeah i mean it's as uh, an actor and a creator, it it there is like a fine line between like what like you know passion like it is pa- it is a passion project and like you want it to be you know what I mean and then versus also like you know what you like you know in the back of my mind I was always like entertainment value at the same time you know what I mean so it's like it's this double edged thing of like. It is, like I said, like passion project, but like do, you know what I mean? Like I want to make it something that people will sit through and I want it to be, Mm -hmm. you know, something that people will want to see, you know what I mean? That like can get through 27 minutes and not like get up and walk away from it or turn it off. Um, Yeah, and projects like that, like lead to other like opportunities with other people who worked on other things. Like uh, Ashley, uh, she, uh, created a web series with another friend of ours. So then when they, when they did that, like they asked me to direct that. It's nice because passion projects can foster great relationships for other passion projects. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I didn't create uh, 
the web series well actually like i didn't write um but it was great to get on and like direct and be with them again and understand someone else's passion project and like be able to bring that to life versus just doing my own you know what i mean yeah and uh you know then COVID happened um (laughs) but um it's you know that's another project being edited together now and that that's great but um yeah i mean with COVID too it's especially hard how do you not how do you continue to feel creative in a time like this? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. How do you not lose lose your mind? Oh, I lost my mind. <laughs> because that's, yeah, for sure. Oh, that happened, for a bit. <laughs> I think it happened to everybody. That, <laughs> that happened to me. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be like, okay, like I'm going to like hit the ground running. And like, I mm-hmm. like, I wrote this, I had an idea and I just like wrote a feature on it. I was like, okay. And that ate up like two weeks. And then I was like, okay, well like, now what? And then I sl- went like slipped down the slope of like, darkness and like this i'm like what am i doing this is crazy like what is my life i can't just you know try to eat healthy and work out every day what do i do for the other 18 hours (laughs) (laughs) i can't sleep because my mind is driving me nuts it's like what yeah man it was i think it was a dark time for like all creatives like what do you do and when all everything dried up everyone was like like it was just because well, there's other yeah, worries my... that came in too, you know, like financial, family, friends. You don't see people. Oh, of course, long, so yeah. Help, it's, it's, you yeah. Know? And yeah, yeah, I get it. I mean, I think I think back in March, I was doing uh, a little mini series on my YouTube channel. But then, when it was done, I was going to continue doing something else. But I immediately slipped down the rabbit hole of mm-hmm. just depression for two weeks straight, and I was immobile. But then. I don't know what happened actually afterwards. I think, oh, I spoke to a friend of mine who said something to me. He said he was an, he's an actor. He works in theater in New York. He lost two of his jobs. Then he had to move back to England because his visa just didn't work out. <laughs> I know. I know that happened to so many people. I know. Yeah. So I know people that happened to He said he, he took the time to consume information on things that he didn't get to do when he was super busy for example he played final fantasy for like hours upon hours and like i, I did the same thing. yeah and honestly i, I, got, I played I got pokemon and it felt great <laughs> i'm not gonna yeah, yeah like yeah. i kind of like read like uh reintroduce some of like my old things i loved to do when i was a kid and i was like yeah, yeah i'm gonna go get that game and I play that game, oh my, like, before I knew it, I was like, wow, I spent a lot of time on that game. But I loved it, and it was great, and it was fun. Like, it was, yeah, it was a good way to just, like, free free up, like, like, I like that dark space in your mind that, like, is just, like, taking over at times. Um, yeah, but, yeah, I, I mean. Sorry, go on. I didn't mind you cut you off. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I think, I think one takeaway from this, um, from you know, this year and just everything that's been happening, especially I've stopped watching the news, by the way, uh, speaking of, you know, so I I stopped watching because <laughs> I just, good can't. idea. I did the same yeah, thing. <laughs> I think I was so consumed back in March and April that it, it did, it did put me down that rabbit hole as well of like being mm-hmm. obsessive over everything. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. um, especially when the protest happened as well, I think during that time I was really in it and I had to step away completely. And I said to myself, I have to take care of my mental health and my body because it was affect. It made me sick physically. Like I started to get like rashes everywhere. And like, I think it's something that people do need to understand that stepping away from things that are pulling you in a negative hole can really just drain your life away. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's really important to give back to yourself, even if it's something like playing Final Fantasy, you know? Absolutely. So, mm-hmm. it, I mean, God, I, I, I can go down that it, tangent forever. But... Right, right, yeah. right. But um, it, it's, as long as, like, you know, I, I know I run into this, and I know a few pe- other people too, but it's like, if I, like, there are times where I'm like, if I'm not cre- being creative, if I'm not taking, like, even like a class over Zoom, if I'm not doing something to further during this time period of nothing going on, like to further my career, like there are times where I tell myself, like, I'm not doing enough. And then I beat myself up and I go down that, do, and I go down that. But like, and I 100% agree. It's like that self care is like what is most important. And, you know, even if it's like playing a video game, watching a movie, like doing any of that, like, 
you know, if I would just tell people like, that's all part of like releasing your brain from that, that, you know, like you're not doing enough, you're not doing enough. It, like, like it's so like, it's okay to be chill for a little while and like, just let it go. And like, just be. Yeah. And then when, when things are back up and running, running again, like you'll be in a better headspace. So when that time comes, like, like it's hard for me to let that stuff go. I yeah. know it's hard for me to let it go. And, um, so like, you know, I just, I, I want people to be able to, you know, like let it go at least easier than I do. Cause I know I beat myself up all, all the time where I'm like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. What am I doing today? And, um, yeah, like it's, it's okay. It's okay to like be chill. It's okay to just be, Yeah. you know, you know? Yeah. You mentioned something, I mean, not doing enough. It's for me, that just sounds like the need for validation from outside mm-hmm. sources, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, as an actor or writer or producer, or if you're a musician or, you know, whoever you are out there, it's like, as a creative, there is that drive of like, I need to do something to prove my worth as an artist, <laughs> further my yeah. career and do this and that. And it's like, I don't, I don't really believe, I used to believe in them and I still do a little bit in my head. I think we all do, we all have that in us um, somewhere. But for the most part, I've realized how much that's damaging to oneself mm-hmm. because you actually hold yourself mm-hmm. back that way, you know? And yeah. I think it's, it's interesting, like, I guess talking to you about um, psychostania, it's really interesting to hear how, like, you're not even, like, talking about, like, yourself as, like, you know, actor or creator or writer. It's like, I think, I think you were doing it just for yourself as, like, a person and, like, pushing that message. And I think that's where to me it just sounded like you just didn't need validation from anything you were just doing something that felt right and that was it (laughs) and I feel like that's like I think that's something that I guess um people should understand that like you don't need to force it out of you if it's something that you feel that you need to do like either creating a story or playing you know Final Fantasy Mm-hmm. It's just, just, just follow that intuition and it actually leads yeah. you to something really good. You're so right. I think you just gave me an epiphany. Cause like, <laughs> as you were saying it, as you were saying it, I'm like, wow, I never, you know, sometimes it just takes another person talking about it, or like perspective for you to really see. But like, I feel like you just opened the picture a little more for me. Cause it's like, yeah, you know what? I never once with psychasthenia felt like I, it was never forced. You know what I mean? It was never, it was always a passion project. It was always fun, you know, and it was always like, it just like came, it just like came out of me. You know what I mean? Like it came out of Matt, it came out, like the work came out of Ashley. Like it it all, like it it all just came out of us in this thing. And yeah, like I really had an epiphany. I was like, yeah, it's so true. We never... I never felt like I have, you know what I mean? Like I have to do this. If I'm not doing this, like, you know, it was never about like, if I'm not creating my own work, like no one's going to see me. I never once felt that way, you know, like it never, wow. Well, (laughs) how much do you charge for therapy? (laughs) (laughs) Well, my weight is. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it's so true. Yeah, you can't force it. You're so right. You can't force it. And there are times I felt like I did that to myself. Like I forced myself to sit down at a computer and like write something, whatever it was, like short story, like, like I'm, I'm, pl- I'm like working on this like fantasy novel, like just stuff, like fun stuff that I've always had in the back of my mind. But there are times I literally forced myself on the computer. Mm-hmm. And by the end of it, I've done more torturing to myself than I did good yeah. for the, for the writing or for me, you know what I mean? You're so right. Yeah, and that yeah, it does it does damage to to your soul, and like you know your insides yeah. and stuff. Like you gotta feed good stuff. Within you. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening to Elliot's vision on psychostania. Don't forget to follow the Dark Brown channel for more information about psychostania and future episodes on the Every Shade podcast.